Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna show you guys how to access your next cloud through dynamic DNS. So let's get started. Now, as a disclaimer, keep in mind, anytime you run anything on your network and you expose it to the internet, like opening a port, you're exposing yourself to possible attacks. So keep that in mind. There are some ways around this. You should definitely use something called fail to band, uh, two-factor authentication, brute force enforcers, uh, blocked by geolocation. So anytime you host something, you should have a lot of these things in place. This way you're at least preventing certain measures from attacking your network. So with that being said, Again, that is a disclaimer, host at your own risk, basically. So there are many different ways to host your next cloud through a domain. You could actually purchase a domain through Cloudflare or uh, purchase domain through only domains and then use that instead of using a dynamic DNS. Cloudflare does have a way where you can update the IP address through an API. So if your home IP addresses does change, it'll know to update Cloudflare. Again, the process is the same. You can run your own domain to your house instead of running dynamic DNS. Now, the process I'm using is Ducks DNS. This is a free service that you can use that will associate a web URL to your home IP. So this way, even if your home IP does change, you don't have to memorize that IP address. You just need to memorize your URL. This particularly helps when you're sharing this to your friends or family or anybody who doesn't know how to use WireGuard. So imagine trying to teach your parents how to use WireGuard and any device that they had to connect to your next cloud needed WireGuard. It's not something that is easy to explain. So this is the reason why I chose this method instead of using WireGuard. It's just much easier for people to connect. And again, I have it for my friends and family so it's just easier for them to memorize a URL than to memorize the procedures to connect to a wire guard connection. Now with that being said the first thing we need to do is sign up for Ducks DNS and I have it right over here and you do have to make a subdomain. The only downside to Ducks DNS is that you are very limited to what you can name your subdomain because they only have one URL which is ducksdns.org and your subdomain name cannot be the same as somebody else who made it. So if I wanted to use Nova Spirit, it's already taken. Or if I wanted to use something else. So you have to be very unique with the name that you're naming. So in my case, I just named it My Nova Cloud, and that apparently seems to work. And then it will know to grab your current IP address. But what's good about Ducks DNS is that if you go into installs, it'll actually give you certain procedures. So if you're using like the Raspberry Pi, it'll actually give you all the process to create a service on your Raspberry Pi so it will update the DNS every, I think, five days or something like that, or five minutes. Well, this is not five minutes, this is probably five days. So every five days, they'll update um, your Ducks DNS to your new home IP, which is pretty good. Again, there's so many different ways. If you're using routers like OpenWRT, you could use it this way and I'll show you the method on how to do it. So I do recommend using Ducks DNS because one, it's free, two, it lays out all the procedures that you need just to get your DNS updated. So I'm not gonna follow these steps. Uh, I actually could go through my router instead of running through the Pi. Again, depending on what router you have, depending on what method you wanna use, this is what you gotta do. Now, first thing what I'm gonna do is pop over to my mini Nix cloud. So I'm gonna pop over there and I wonder if I have open SSL. I do, okay. So the command that we're gonna be using is open SSL request x509 SHA-256 nodes new key RSA-2048 days, we'll do 365 key out and we're gonna call this local localhost dot key and the regular out, we're gonna call this local host dot CRT. Oh, it's supposed to be days. And there we go. All you need to do now is just fill out the information. You can leave this kind of like empty if you want. Again, this is your own self-signed certificate. So that's what we're running right now because we want SSL to work. The biggest difference between running your own domain, like from only domains or GoDaddy or something like that, versus running a DNS service like Ducks DNS or No IP or Dynamic DNS, is that you can't use Let's Encrypt on those DNS services. But if it's your own domain, you can run Let's Encrypt and that'll be a lot easier. It won't pop up with a question, are you sure if this is secure? 
that's the biggest difference because since it's your own domain, you can register it and actually get that as a SSL. But again, with dynamic DNS, you can't. This is why we are running self-signed certificates instead. So now that I actually created this self-signed certificate into this directory, I'm gonna leave it here for now because we do need to transfer it to a spot. So I'm gonna open this and go to my mini next cloud portainer. And in here, what I like to run is something called Caddy. So I'm gonna go into app templates and search for Caddy. There are different ones that you can use. There's Caddy, there's Nginx, and there's also traffic. So if you are looking for some sort of like service where it'll actually take their interpreted URL and then transfer it to another host, Caddy or traffic can do that. So there's also, there's also traffic like this, traffic native cloud stacking. But like I said, I'm more comfortable with using Caddy. So, okay, in here, what we have going on is, um, I already laid out like a port number 2019 um, as a host that you can use. Then you have 80, then you have 443. I don't need to host 80 or 443. Now, generally, if you're hosting from your own home or your ISP, won't usually allow anything under a thousand. So 80 and 443 won't be allowed. Regardless, I don't need these ports, so I don't want them. I'm just gonna keep 2019. Now, here we have caddy configuration files, which we will need to modify. And then we have a config file over here. So keep in mind that portainer files, app data, config, caddy, config. This is actually where we are going to put our self-signed certificate. So I'm going to copy this just in case because I'm going to forget this. So I'm going to do that and deploy this container. While that's being deployed, I'm going to change over to that directory, you see, and copy the local host and the CRT and the key over to this directory. So I'm gonna cp localhost.star, which is gonna transfer both the files to this area. Obviously I need to sudo because this is a locked folder. Now, I'm not sure why it actually went not start. Oh yes, I completely skipped this step as well. <laughs> you actually have to run this little script. Um, I made the script so it creates the config files. So let's do that. And since it created the caddy file itself as a folder, I'm gonna delete that. So rm-rf portainer files app data config caddy and then config file, caddy file. I don't need this sudo again. And there you go. And then now I could run this wget and drop the caddy file into that area. Okay, so now we should be able to run this because it turned it into a directory instead of a file. So let's start that up. There you go. It successfully created that. And what we need to do next is configure it. So I'm going to go into the console. And I remember this has to use a shell script instead of bash. And there we go. We have our little terminal to edit the file that we need. Technically, we can edit the file in here as well. We could just go into our SSH session and edit the file, but I'm gonna do it right through this console. First, I'm gonna double check if my config has my local host and local key. Yes, it's there. And then now I can nano etc caddy and then the caddy file. Oh, there's no nano, so vi etc caddy and then caddy file so from here this is a general example file that you could see i'm going to delete this and start typing in what i need in here okay so first off what we need to do is figure out what our domain name was so in my case it was my nova cloud dot duck dns dot org and the port number that we're actually gonna be using to connect is 2019, which is uh, referred from the beginning. Now I'm gonna open that bracket and then close another bracket. I like to do it like this as I go. Next, we need to tell where the config, uh, the TLS files are or the SSL. So TLS config and it's localhost.crt and config localhost.key. What's cool is that if you are using Let's Encrypt, instead of using TLS like this, you could actually just add an email address and it'll know to register the email address with uh, Let's Encrypt. So Caddy makes it super easy to automatically obtain the Let's Encrypt key if you're planning to go that route. But again, because we are using a, a dynamic DNS service, we can't do that, so we're using self-signed. Next, 
a handle path. Okay, here we're gonna take the root, which is anything that is mynovacloud.ducksdns.org colon 2019 slash anything underneath that's like directory, it's gonna bring it to this other location. So handle path like this. And in here, what I'm gonna do is reverse proxy https 127.0.0.1 and I believe we named the 5443 and in here we have to add another thing called transport http tls insecure skip verify So this will actually skip the verification process of the TLS knowing that it is a self sustained certificate and it will still allow it to pass through. Now what's cool about this is that you could use Caddy for any of your services. So if you got a DNS service and you wanted to list out more services than just your next cloud, you could either add a new section for Nick, uh, my Nova cloud and make a new DNS and you could call it anything else that ducks DNS and that new URL could go to some other service you have like guacamole or flame or whatever you want or you could add another handle path like this and make a subdirectory or a subfolder of your um, my Nova cloud so in our case if we're gonna want to run uh, next cloud office okay so here's the weird thing next cloud office runs off HTTP there is no way to run it off HTTPS, which is why it's very annoying to set up through Nextcloud. So in order to bypass that, you actually have to convert the HTTP to an HTTPS traffic, which you can do in Caddy. So to get actually Nextcloud Office to work, you would have to do NC Office like this, slash star, and then in here, you would do the reverse proxy HTTP and then you would do 127.0.0.1 and the default port is 9980 and then you would close that out. Now this will actually take your HTTPS and reverse it back to HTTP and then everything would just work itself out. So if you are planning to run your own Nextcloud office, this is the, the, the way you would have to add this little bit in just so it knows that Nextcloud office will be under HTTPS. Now with that being done, I'm just gonna close this out, hitting escape, colon, WQ, and now my config files are in, and all I have to do is just restart Caddy and it should take the new configuration files along with the self-signed certificates. So I'm just gonna restart this. Now the next step is to open up the port 2019 from your router to this server here, whatever the IP may be. Again, there are many services for port forwarding. If you have a different router or you have Optimum Online or you have something like that that requires a web browser to go through it. So I can't go through every process of port forwarding, but you do have to port forward 2019 in order to get to this server. Once the server detects you are coming from mynovacloud.ducksdns.com, Caddy will take over and then forward it into your next cloud session to that other 5443 port. Now I'm not gonna show you the whole process of connecting onto that. You've seen it in my last video. This video is getting a lot longer than I wanted to already, but you get the idea. Now you should be able to use your phone, connect to this DNS and connect to your next cloud without having to use WireGuard or anything else like that. As a reminder, if you cannot connect to this connection in your house, then you might have a weird loopback issue, which is again, a configuration in your router that you might have to disable because it's trying to go outside back into your house so there's this weird loop back coming back in if you do have that issue disconnect from the wi-fi use the cellular network and see if the connection works if that works and it doesn't work in your house uh through your wi-fi network mean that means you have a loop back issue and it's another problem you're gonna have to resolve anyway that is it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it this is the method that i run that makes it so much easier for friends and family to use your own next cloud as well and you have as many connections as you want. But keep in mind, uh, definitely uh, put up your defenses, uh, two-factor authentication, um, brute force detector, fail to ban, anything that you want, you gotta put those up because there will be people, just bots like sniffing out ports to see if there's a web host being connected to it and 
you might just be one of those lucky few, you know? So if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say my Nerd Cave, Hack the other hearts.